welcome to this week's Geek Storm 245, 246, 247. You were wrong when you told me the other day, the other day, when I say the other day, obviously five weeks ago, but <laughs> when you said it was 246, it was really 245 or something like that. When I, and we have the tape to prove it, they don't use tape anymore. We've got a, a wonderful new camera this week with uh, six Ks, there's many Ks. Uh, Lots four, of Ks. Fours and fives are enough. Five's not enough, seven too many. We settled on the six, and I think we got a pretty good deal on it, <laughs> on our 6K camera. So, uh, you know, um, Lauren and I, Lauren doesn't need to. I spent a lot of extra time in makeup today to try to, you know, really make it pop. Make it, uh, I'm, I'm scary to think about what it's going to do to Sean, to be honest. <laughs> <clears throat> to be honest. But, uh, hey, welcome to this week's Geek Storm, everybody. We are here in beautiful downtown Kokomo at 111 East Sycamore at uh, Kokomo Toys and Collectibles, where I am surrounded by a bevy. A literal plethora. And I use the word literally correctly, I think I did. Uh, I'm joined this week by uh, Lauren, always, always welcome uh, co-host. I won't say guest host because you know you're on the. Are you on the? You're on the thing. You're on the. You know, it's. I don't know. This. It's just. You are a master of words. I know. I'm really. I'm really uh, a wordsmith today. It's so. A plus. Yeah. If if she could just pipe down a little bit and let me know what that was. I think you're doing just would fine yourself. Be great. That would be great. <laughs> I'm thrown off today because we got a sponsor today. We got a couple sponsors today, um, and we'll see. We'll talk about those later. But uh, when I say sponsors, I mean in no way are they sponsors. But um, anyway, uh, hey, how's it going? It's going. How's it going to you? Fantastic. Yeah. Sean's not here today, so we can all count our blessings on that one. And it's just me and you. <laughs> We're going to talk about what we've uh, what we've seen or watched this uh, recently. Now, Sean, Sean and I talked a little bit about October Faction last week. Mm -hmm. We both have seen the first episode, and I haven't seen any since then. It is a show I do want to watch, yeah. um, but I haven't seen any more. Have you seen more of them? Uh, no, just the first episode. Just the first one. Yeah. Okay, so we'll, we'll go into that again. Um, so, great segment. Uh, so, uh, we... <laughs> uh, it was just, it's weird. It's just one of those, like, I saw the trailer for it because mm -hmm. I had no idea anything about it, and mm -hmm. Netflix sent me a notification. Right. And when I saw the trailer, I was like, that's something that I probably would dig, mm -hmm. but it doesn't look like it'll blow me away. And that's exactly what the first episode was. It, it worries <laughs> me a little bit. And again, I, I did like the first episode, but it worries me a little bit in that I didn't even hear that this was in the pipeline, yeah. you know? And I own the comic. I bought it back when it was out. I bought the first issue anyway, just to see if I would like it. And, you know, we're into this stuff. We're all over Netflix, and I when it said, hey, uh, premiering tomorrow or today or whatever, I'm like, I didn't even know this was a thing. Yeah. So that makes me think that maybe they weren't, uh, they weren't too, uh, you know, maybe we'll get a second season is what I'm trying, is what I'm yeah. trying to get. <laughs> but there's so many shows, there's so many oh, shows yeah. to keep up on uh, that you would think people like us would know that something like that was coming out because it's right up our, right up our proverbial alley. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Speaking of Netflix, there's a, there is a, uh, documentary I want to see coming up called uh, McMillions. Do you know about this? Mm -mm. Okay, so you're familiar with uh, McDonald's doing their Monopoly game, their scratch uh, yeah. off and open up or whatever. And apparently there's a guy who worked for McDonald's as security regarding these game pieces. And he was notifying various people that he knew around the country, hey, if you go to this location, uh, one of these you know, million dollar pieces is, huh. is going to be at this location. And he made millions and his his people, I think were maybe organized crime, were also making all, they were collecting all the big all the big pieces yeah. and making all the money. So the documentary is about that and how, that's he, interesting. how he got caught and everything. I, that's the kind of thing I really like. There was, somebody put something up that's like the the top 10 documentaries that are coming out this year and that was one of them and I really, I think it comes out next, it comes out in February. So oh, nice. look, look forward to seeing that. So uh, what have you been up to? What have you been doing? Uh, not a whole lot. Been working, been writing, mm. been watching uh, like Picard and Critical Role. And yeah, okay, we'll talk about those. Yeah. Let's let's get into Lauren right now, though. Okay. Let's talk about let's talk about what's Lauren. What's going on with Lauren? <laughs> what's going What is going on with me? Well, when I when I say that, I'm really stretching because we have about two things to talk about today. <laughs> so. so. <laughs> So that's why we have props and things, you know. Oh, I brought, yeah. I had props a couple weeks ago with the, the bomb and the ham sandwich. That was, Mike, that was best episode ever, right? Honestly? Uh, he's, he can't contain himself. <laughs> I mean, it said <laughs> ham on the bag. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm just having fun with myself at this point. But, uh, okay, so let's talk about Picard. Yeah. Um, uh, the second episode just came out yesterday. I haven't seen it. You haven't seen it. Mm -mm. Okay, so we'll just talk about the first episode. Last week, uh, Sean hadn't seen it yet, and I had. So um, uh, uh, 
it is really, it's one of those things that when uh, CBS All Access was first announced, you know, we had, it's been a couple years and we've had, we've had Discovery, mm -hmm. but when Picard was announced, that was like, pow, fan favorite. That's like the people who are divided about Discovery, they're definitely on board for Picard yeah. because everybody loves Next Generation. I don't know anybody that doesn't love Next Generation. It's, it's, it was my Star Trek, you know, even though I, I grew up on reruns, uh, you know, from, from the original series, mm -hmm. Next Generation was the first one where I watched serialized, I want to see the next episode, yeah. and it just happened to be on syndication, so I got to see two or three, a couple episodes a night anyway, on uh, on Fox, and um, so everybody loves Picard. I don't know anybody that doesn't like him. Um, uh, it was one of those. It had a lot of uh, anticipation leading up to it. Mm -hmm. um, did you rewatch anything or? Do any preparation coming up to watching the first episode? Um, of Picard? Well, not necessarily specifically for that. Mm -hmm. I had been going through the Star Treks uh, late last year. Mm -hmm. um, I just started watching it. I had never seen Deep Space Nine its entirety, mm -hmm. so I watched The Next Generation and then I watched Deep Space Nine mm -hmm. um, because I watched Voyager when it came out, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. every week. Mm -hmm. uh, so I I enjoyed that. Um, I really wished I had watched Nemesis again before I saw the first episode mm. because I found myself during the first episode like, okay, what happened? What was the last right, thing that happened? Right, right. Like, because I remember right. the when finale. He talks about, he, when he talks about Dana <laughs> sacrificing himself, yes. I'm like, I don't remember that. Yeah. You know? um, and that's one of those, de character deaths are always tough because, you, you know, people come back and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when it happened in the movie, uh, then, you know, did it really happen or, or yeah. will we get it back somehow with lore or whatever? But yeah, I uh, all I did, I watched, somebody came up with a list, I don't know if it was Nerdist or somebody came up with a list of, the, you need to watch these nine episodes of Star Trek-ish stuff to get prepared for Picard. Oh, okay. And uh, I did watch, I was already on a, on a Voyager rewatch, that's what, I'm, that's what I'm going to sleep to every night. So I've, I'm in the middle of that anyway, and luckily it was just at the part where we got to, um, one of their recommendations was the introduction of uh, Seven of Nine, uh, because of the Borg aspect of, oh, yeah. uh, and, and her being in the, in the show at some point in the season this this year, but um, uh, the first one they named was um, Measure of a Man, which was the one where Data kind of goes on trial as to mm -hmm. whether or not he's uh, sentient or not, whether yeah. or not he's property of Star that's Starfleet one of the, or not. The peak episodes of the series. It really uh, is. It really is good, and uh, that's where they name. And so in episode one of Picard, they name checked that guy, uh, Bruce Maddox, and uh, I don't know if he was a commander or, or whatever where he was, but um, as the problem, or let's say the the, um, the origination of the of what we now see are these synth synthetics. They're yeah. calling them synth. So we've jumped ahead. I don't know, fifteen or sixteen years. They said from from uh, insurrection, uh, nemesis, 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 yes. and um, we don't. I don't think we know. Maybe if you know, we know. I don't about what's happened with this uh, uh, Romulus exploding and um, or a supernova of some kind mm -hmm. and the evacuation of a car tried to help and all that. They really do kind of throw a lot of backstory at you that you don't know about yet. Yeah, well they, there have been a ton of books released okay. since, even since Nemesis that they say are like in canon. Mm -hmm. I haven't read any of them, mm -hmm. but I have a feeling that that is what it's referencing or everything that happened sure. in those books. Mm -hmm. um, but I, the, who was the girl that, went to seek safety in him. She looks Dodge. so familiar to me. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know where she's from. I went right. to IMDB here, but uh -huh. um, I really liked her uh -huh. a lot. I thought she did really well acting wise. Right. She was believable. And right. That was just a really tough scene to watch. And they kind of went all, you know, when she kind of like, okay, so she's this, when we first meet her, she's just a girl with her boyfriend in their apartment and then guys jump in mm -hmm. and kill the boyfriend, and then but she goes all River Tam and like turns something <laughs> <Yep>. on, <laughs> and you know, I was like, you know, that choreography was fantastic, yes. the fight choreography, and for once they didn't darken the room. Now the guys had all on all black, but they didn't darken the room too much to where you're to cover up uh, special effects or bad bad choreography. So um, I really enjoyed that fight scene and. Um, both fight scenes. There was a secondary fight scene um, on the grounds of Starfleet Academy, and on that rooftop? one was yeah. No. Okay, yeah, yeah. Was done really well it too. It was. It was. Um, yeah, that was just. They put a lot of money into that. Yeah, <laughs> into yeah. that. They yeah. put a lot of work and a lot of love into that. Right. Right. Um, I'm not like the biggest Star Trek fan ever, but I enjoyed it, and I, I hope that the huge Star Trek fans mm -hmm. were really pleased with. I what never they really. Did. I, I did watch all of Deep Space Nine, and I know a lot of people. Uh, it's their favorite. It is my least favorite of all. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I just did not enjoy it as much as uh, Voyagers is number two for me after uh, generation or yeah uh, next generation. So 
Um, Voyager. But we, yeah. we catch up with, with John Luke Picard on his uh, vineyard at home, and uh, that's, again, one of the episodes that they uh, recommended you see ahead of time was the one where he goes back home and he meets his mm -hmm. brother and they get in a fight in the mud and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> uh, so that was uh, a little familiar to me, but um, I didn't, what race are those two people that, that that live with him? Live with him, I yeah. thought they were Vulcan. Are, are they, they It's hard to tell. It's hard, yeah, it was hard for me to tell. Anyway. Maybe they are. Are they not Romulan? They're Romulan. They're Romulan. Romulan? Okay, because they did talk a little bit about... You find out in the episode. Oh, you oh, do? Oh, okay. Okay. Spoiler. Yeah. Well, that's probably not a big... Probably not a big... Secret, I assume they were Vulcan. <laughs> yeah, okay. It's hard to tell. Mm -hmm. And those two races are very similar anyway, aren't they? Aren't they offshoot one of another? Vulcan. Right. Ago, so, yeah, <clears throat> uh, so um, and you see... You see him kind of doddering around like a 90-year-old dude, because he certainly is. Yes. And you, he, and he no longer drinks tea Earl Grey hot. It's no decaf. Uh, well, you know, he's got heart issues. You know, he's had an actual heart issue, okay? Doesn't he have like a mechanical heart? I, he does have I a mechanical so. heart, right? Yeah. Okay. So. so he doesn't need it. Hey, maybe you're right. Maybe it's a special lubricant or something that keeps, the, keeps things going. Uh, but... Yeah, so, and, and, and him being 80 or 90 is never more evident when you see the action shots where you, you see Picard running from behind. Yeah. That's obviously not, uh, not him, <laughs> but uh, he did a great job. And, mm -hmm. and, and, you know, but again, he was all, you know, kind of moping around, not moping, but just being an old man mm -hmm. uh, around, the, around the vineyard and whatnot. And even when Dodge shows up, um, he kind of, you kind of see uh, that spark light a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And especially in that interview, when he's doing the TV interview, you see that one of, the, one of my favorite parts about the Picard character is just uh, him, him turning on kind of a, an, an, not enraged, but a... But a uh, Authority. Yeah, like, like uh, he, all of a sudden he was Captain Picard again right right then. Mm -hmm. So that was pretty cool. Um, is there any parts about it you did or didn't like that where you'd like to see differently or um, more of? No, like I said, I love the, the choreography. That I see. The cinematography even was yes. just Beautifully fantastic. Yes, shot. Great show. Uh, there, was a, there was a shot, nothing even really happened. He was just sitting in the vineyard, mm -hmm. but it was pulled back right. in a way that kind of looked like just a renaissance painting because mm -hmm. he's just leaning back mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. kind of enjoying the scenery so they just they took their time and they took their care they plotted every single thing every single thing happened and had a purpose mm -hmm. for showing whatever was showing on the screen at the time mm -hmm. um, I liked it I was entertained yeah I, I liked all the, the little nods to you know the series and stuff it was, it was pretty cool there wasn't a ton of it but there was like that banner from uh, what's called Picard Day, where basically all the children on the Enterprise go and, and, and I don't know if they have a party of some kind or ask questions of, of Captain Picard, but they made him, made him a banner and it's in one of the episodes. Mm -hmm. um, I'm hoping that, because we got a lot of data in this episode, I'm hoping that we get in the 10 episodes there are, or eight episodes, whatever it is, like at least every couple episodes we get somebody like that, you know, where, mm -hmm. where they're just an injection. I know we're gonna see uh, Riker at some point. I would say I've seen promo shots of Riker and Troy. Right. Um, and and uh, seven of nine is in it. Uh, we've seen her, and um, one that I I didn't know until I saw a trailer breakdown when the trailer came out was there's a character in there that there's a board character named that they named him Hugh. He came and he came was uh, separate, separated from the collective. This is mm -hmm. before uh, seven of nine uh, did it on Voyager, and um, that character in more of a human form shows up in the trailer at least. Oh, hmm. So uh, and he's running down a hallway or something like that. So I, I assume we're gonna see him yeah. him also. I would kind of like to see nods to other Star Trek characters as well. Um, like in Nemesis, we find out that um, Janeway is an admiral. So maybe see her mm -hmm. just, like on Starfleet or something. That is one thing I did not like actually. Uh, during the fight on mm -hmm. the roof of Starfleet Academy, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. no, other people ever come like there's no guards no security nothing it is the yeah. <laughs> starfleet academy just yeah that's what it is on a lot of shows where <laughs> <Nothing>. <laughs> it's certainly budget restraints but like take a show like buffy or angel where there'll be scenes where you're walking down a street and you'll have 20 or 30 extras 99 percent of the show is those five characters in a room and even when they go from place to place, walking down the school hallway, you just don't see that many extra people. And, and um, I think they probably chose a rooftop just for that, for that purpose. Yeah. So they could, I know this is supposed to be a bustling place, but if we're up here, maybe we don't, we don't see as many people. Um, so, uh, and do you know about the, this merger with, uh, with Viacom and Sony and, and possibly, oh, that does put 
It's put all the Star Trek stuff, movies and TV shows, all in one under one basket. Oh now. wow! Um, so with that merger, it allows them to maybe play a little bit more with things like we're talking about with uh, some crossovers. Um, maybe we'll see. I don't know some things that'd be pretty cool. Mm -hmm. um, but I really enjoyed it. I'm looking forward to more. The only, the only, at the time watching it, and I've watched it once. The only complaint I had or thing that kind of took me out of the story was how quickly Picard made the uh, connection between this painting and uh, the girl. Oh yeah. Um, how many? And she wasn't even. She wasn't even. Cert she's certainly a beautiful young woman, but she, she wasn't even unique in a, in a certain way with a certain hair or. Uh, like you know, a mole on her face. Yeah, she was, she was a, a dark-haired young girl, and all of a sudden she, he remembers that that painting is is there, and he goes and sees it, which was cool that we saw that yeah, little the vault. Archive. But uh, uh, that was a little too quick for me, or a little too like, oh, this is a TV show, we need to get rolling, type of mm -hmm. thing, plot point. But other than that, I really enjoyed it, and I'm looking forward to watching. I was going to watch the other one this morning, and then you said you hadn't watched it, so um, I didn't watch it. I'm ready to watch it. I'm ready to watch it. Sorry. Yeah. Um, Star Trek Discovery. Season three is coming out pretty mm -hmm. soon. Did you see the trailer for that? Have uh, you watched Discovery? Yet, no. What? No. Mike? I watched the first season. After I watched the first episode of Picard, I thought, yeah, I was all Star Trek. I went to the first episode of season two. Uh huh. I compare it to, okay, Discovery season one, uh -huh. the Academy of Star Trek. You were given a cardboard pizza. Uh -huh. You've not had pizza in so long. Uh -huh. It's delicious. Uh -huh. In Picard, you uh -huh. get a real pizza. Uh -huh. And then you go back to that cardboard and like, right. no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mike, you couldn't be more wrong. Okay, Discovery is a really, really good show. Okay, yeah. great character development. Number season two gets really more into a MacGuffin type of deal where there, there's a mystery and they're trying to figure it out. And oh, we gotta find these seven points of in in space. So you and you know over the course of this series, this is the third one. This is the fourth one. Th that type of thing. So it's, it's definitely like that more. But it's very good, Mike. It's very good. Hey, and here's the thing in season three. Okay. They are jumping ahead in time so they can get completely out of uh, canon. They're not out of canon, but out of having to worry about doing things that would affect future canon things, okay? So they're jumping. So they're retconning their first two seasons? No, no, no. They're, <laughs> they're literally jumping ahead in time. Not, they're not, the characters aren't getting older. They do some type of, where they warp or whatever to get yeah. like to, year, to you know, 3,000 years in the future. Something that's beyond what we've seen so far in Star mm -hmm. Trek lore. So they're going to be, you know, what would be the, the farthest in the future. Uh, that way they don't have to, like I said, because Spock spent, they spent a great deal of time with, with Spock in season two. And, you know, I'm sure they're walking on eggshells trying not to mess up things that they want to consider a, a long timeline or a canon, even though they're, you know, they're, the Abrams versus is around. They want to placate fans, and mm -hmm. apparently that hasn't worked with Mike at all, but I think you should watch the show. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Check it out. Let me tell you, if, you can, if you can sit through Deep Space Nine, you can certainly sit through <laughs> two great seasons of, of I Star enjoyed Discovery. Deep Space Nine. Oh, stop. Nobody I enjoyed Voyager, Deep Space Nine. I Voyager, but Deep Space Nine was fun. <clears throat> no, I didn't like it. I will say I didn't like it. I was, it's my least favorite of the shows. Mm. Okay. Of, That's fair. Of the hundreds of hours of, of Star Trek, probably. Is there a thousand hours of Star Trek? I bet there Probably. is. Probably. I bet there is. 24, 24 episodes, you count all seven the movies. seasons. <laughs> I'll have that staff for you next week. <laughs> it's important. Please let us know if you need help. Uh, so, okay, so we'll get out of Star Trek hour now and talk about the other half of the show, which is going to be about this awesome show called Critical Role. Yeah. I'm so excited. Please tell us about it. Uh, so. What Critical Role is, is uh, a bunch of voice actors mm -hmm. uh, that sit around and play Dungeons and Dragons every week right. on Twitch. Is, you're really doing Go it? ahead. All right. <laughs> um, it started back uh, on Geek and Sundry's Twitch channel. Oh, I like Geek um, and Sundry. They uh, were really rough. They basically brought what they were playing at home onto um, Screen, and it's gone through two campaigns now, as well as several one shots. Now, were these people actually playing together before they decided to yeah. make a uh, to make a show yeah, about they it? They were they were just voice actors that, uh, when their schedules lined up, mm -hmm. they played D and D. Mm -hmm. And uh, Geek and Sundry, like literally when they were first starting out, they were like, "Oh no, we need content. Mm -hmm. Will you play D and D while we figure things out?" And it got so popular that they ended up breaking from Geek and Sundry, and they now have their own Twitch channel, their own licensing, their own merch. Their uh, everything has gotten huge. 
And it's funny because the fact that they're using voice actors, they use their talents and they mm -hmm. do all these different voices for all of their characters. Right. Matt Mercer's the dungeon master. He does all these different NPC characters. Uh -huh. um, you wouldn't necessarily recognize any of these people just by watching them, but if you've played a video game, if you've watched <coughs> an anime, a cartoon, mm -hmm. a kid's show in the last 20 years, right. you have heard them. Right. You've heard any one of their voices. They've all done millions of things. I watched well over 20 minutes of this show yeah. today. <laughs> Each episode is roughly four hours, is that? Yeah. Okay, so, and how Around many episodes? This is like episode 92 so or 93? the first campaign went uh -huh. 115 episodes. Wow! And then this is campaign two, and they're on episode 90, 93 aired last, this morning. Wow. Essentially, because wow. they're on Pacific time, uh -huh. so they don't start till 10 p.m. my time. So do they do, Twitch is live? Yeah, they'll do it live, uh -huh. it's live, and then they'll bring up the video on demand on Twitch, you can watch it all weekend, I and see. then it goes on YouTube, so you can watch it for free if okay. you don't want to su subscribe to Twitch. Right. Twitch on Mondays. Okay. Um, so you've got a, a bunch of, you've got basically the setup, If and I hadn't seen it until today, but the, you've got the uh, Dungeon Master and he's behind his screen right here and he's got a line of tables, a line of tables here and a line of tables here. Mm -hmm. Four people on this side, four people on that side. And the camera will switch from a one shot with him to a four shot there or a four shot there. But then also it'll, uh, it'll go into four quadrants where you'll have the uh, DM here, you'll have one table here, one table here, and then what happens in this? Mm -hmm. uh, the, you see the rolls? The free square? Yeah. You <laughs> um, see the rolls? No. Sometimes you do, but most of the time not. The, the free square is for mm -hmm. that uh, episode sponsor that night, because mm -hmm. they have a sponsor. Oh, they do? Yes. Well, uh, this, this, <laughs> this episode <laughs> I watched, they had a sponsor, and it was for what? Uh, Something was sweet. Something... Here's how great this great the commercial spot for it was is that I don't remember what the actual product <laughs> well, was. Well, that's the whole point. They the do hook an ad was, for it. I'm going to do something stupid, and this thing, let's say this this toy makes everything so sweet. So let's see what else makes sweet. And they took uh, something like this ready whip here mm -hmm. and put it on many different things. Yes, red wine, a salad, <laughs> pizza. And this is uh, the flaming hot Cheetos. Flaming hot Cheetos that they did. This one's for you. You oh, can have that thank one. Thank you. Hang on, wait for me. Okay, I will. Mike? <laughs> Mike? So is it, he did a, is it better or worse? Yes. Does, does whipped cream make it better right, or worse? Right, right, that's right. I almost cursed. It's holy, actually, it's actually not bad. Holy cow, that's good. <laughs> that's, that's actually really good. Oh my really gosh. Good. <laughs> he was onto something there. Holy cow. <laughs> No, because, and I actually, okay, so I went vegan like last month, so I really shouldn't even be eating this. But <laughs> it's not a religion or a medical condition, so I can cheat every once in a while if I want to. I had a steak last week, it's not a big deal. But, um, but yeah, uh, I won't be having that a lot, but I'm definitely gonna, we're gonna, you that's, can't, we're, yeah, we're taking this home with us. So the the shtick is, there's an ad every, uh, every episode uh -huh. for whoever sponsored them for that yeah, episode. I'm gonna do that again while you talk. All right. He, uh, he does something crazy. Sometimes they're really genius. Sometimes they're not so genius. That was one of his not so genius wow. ones. But that was really good. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I mean, there's uh, a kick at the end, but uh, but 80% through, that's pretty fantastic. There's a, there's actually an overarching storyline to one of the ads. Every time NordVPN sponsors them, he is this character called Haxer or somebody. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And Laura Bailey, who sits next to him, is a Kryptonic Override. <coughs> is she the so one that does this... the Russian voice? Yes. Okay, because mm -hmm. she sounded no she sounded an awful lot like uh, Zoya on uh, <laughs> Glow on your American yeah. Netflix. She, so she's also what... Shin-Chan, if you've ever seen the anime Shin-Chan. So. It's like the exact opposite of the voice she oh, does for that show. <laughs> Um, so that was pretty cool seeing, and I did watch a little bit of it. I skipped ahead and watched some of the actual role play. Mm -hmm. And uh, the difference being that, like, say, uh, when the people in this room do the role play, we don't necessarily do voices very much. Yeah. Uh, the DM will do some voices once in a while just to differentiate NPCs, but I, I don't think I've ever done a voice while, while role playing. Um, <clears throat> so these are all talented voice actors, mm -hmm. and they each get in character, and they come in and out of character when they're talking to the DM and yeah. things like that. But while they're saying it in character, then they are doing the voice, mm -hmm. which is it's pretty cool. Uh, um, parts of it are a little slow, but I, I'm sure if I watched uh, from the beginning or, or uh, different parts uh, that were more oriented to what I wanted to see, I would yeah. uh, You watch it better. like for the story, the whole right. story. Like uh, last week's episode, what you saw part of, mm -hmm. was fantastic, <clears throat> and uh, I used to act, and that episode made me just miss acting for what happened in the episode. There mm -hmm. was a huge emotional moment 
and uh, the voice actress Marisha was mm. crying, oh. like in character, because of what was going on, and wow. it was affecting her character. Wow! Um, so it was powerful stuff, and that's why I like it. I, I can connect to these people. Mm -hmm. I don't get the chance to play D and D a whole <clears throat> lot because of work and everything else like that. So uh -huh. that kind of like I can g get my D and D fix from that. Sure. Um, but yeah, they like said it's grown into this phenomenon. They're doing a live show in Chicago at the end of February. Wow! You can go watch it live for four hours. Right. <laughs> Pay tickets. <laughs> wow! Um, That'd be something else. Yeah, I'm excited, and all of them have sold out. They've got an animated series coming out now of the first campaign mm -hmm. um, that did so well on Kickstarter. Amazon said, "Here's money, do a second season." So before even seeing the first season, they're like, "Here, here's money for a second season." And this is a great example of something that's super successful. Are there others that are trying to do the same thing that that are, you know, say, you know, almost as good as Critical Role or? I'm sure that people, you know, just do it and, mm -hmm. and it, you know, nobody ever sees it, but are there other ones besides Critical Role out there that are like this that would be worth watching? Uh, yeah, there's a D20. Um, that's on, uh, I think, yeah, College Humor. Mm -hmm. um, there's a group on Twitch, I can't remember their name right now, but uh, they're in Britain, and they're pretty much like Britain's version of Critical Role. Mm -hmm. They're like that big mm -hmm. in, in England, mm -hmm. um, and they actually had the DM of that group mm -hmm. guest Play, play an NPC mm -hmm. in Critical Role a few times. Now the the, um, the British group, when things are getting tough and they're you know losing a battle, do the American role players come in and kind of <laughs> save the day? <laughs> Not or? that I've seen. <laughs> I haven't really no, seen. No. Okay. Well, I just that. wondered if that's. How but and um, oh, <laughs> <laughs> they've uh, uh, they've branched out. They've done other. Um, uh, What's the word I'm looking for, Mike? Yeah. Systems? Well, systems, yeah, okay. systems. Uh, besides that, good job. Yeah. <laughs> um, and they've done different one uh -huh. shots. Uh -huh. uh, they did a new kind of version of it where they played uh, Deadlands. And uh, they dressed in character. Wow. And they That's had like a saloon bartender off to the it. side. I'm against it. <laughs> it was it was actually really neat. They kind of you could tell that they were trying to experiment with different. They would do the close up reaction shots of people instead of just the standard like here's all the people. Now Mike's been talking for years about getting us some studio space. Yeah. Okay for the show. So I think if we did something like that, it'd be kind of cool. And we could put that on the on the keg. The keg of two. You could put it on there. <laughs> okay. What? Well, <clears throat> people can be taken care of. You got two actors right here. <clears throat> That's right. <clears throat> some. Speaking of acting, you know what uh, <laughs> Kyan's doing? You know, uh, Geek Storm's own Kyan yeah. uh, is um, he's in a play down in Indy now. He's in, oh, there's nice. a, there's a, a little production company for kids. This this is grades three through eight, mm -hmm. and K, uh, he's in fifth grade. And they're doing this particular play. They're doing is um, oh, what's the what's the Grease Witherspoon uh, Harvard Legally Blonde. It's Legally Blonde Junior. Oh, okay. And um, he, this is his first try, and we just heard about it. We wanted him to go down there, and uh, we go in down for the tryouts and all that. And if you're in, you're in. You 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 certainly pay for it. So yeah. everybody's going to get a part. There's 16 kids, but only two boys. Hmm. Okay, and but there's not many boy parts in this particular production anyway. So uh, he was excited. He got he got the lead uh, the lead male role anyway oh, nice. uh, for his first time. And he's pretty pretty uh, Emmett, I think is the name is the uh, not the boyfriend, but he's the like the college TA or whatever oh, that yeah. that uh, kind of falls for for L. So um, that's what that's when we talk about uh, the audiobooks. That's what I've been doing driving back and forth because we we got to go twice a week and you know that's four hours a day or four hours a week anyway. At least I get to listen to a book or, mm -hmm. or whatever. So. Um, uh, he's, I think he's going to catch the acting bug. He really likes Good. it. Um, that's something that's... Uh, we don't have a lot of around here. We've got the Kokomo Civic Players, Civic Theater, something like that. And then does IU do a thing, I think, maybe? Um, but nothing nothing for kids. Yeah. So it was, it's pretty cool. Well, I think that's why games like Dungeons & Dragons or you know any of those type of role-playing games are mm -hmm. important to children. Because not only do you kind of get to test those acting chops, um, it helps with math. It helps oh yeah, with English. It helps, you know, just kind of get you out of your shell. And and and, and, and so more important. abstract things, Con uh, decision making, problem solving, um, team yeah, art. strategy, <laughs> tactics, uh, things you're going to need in real life. If you're having a knife fight, that type of thing, <laughs> dropping the knife down to here because that's the move uh, lately. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, kids, get your knives out. We're going to role play. <laughs> Uh, Sean's an excellent uh, uh, DM, mm -hmm. and he's great with kids, whether he, he thinks he is or not. 
uh, he would be a good person to run kids through a through a game. I, I think he's probably done that with three your kids. Uh, yes, we've done spelling Dungeons and Dragons with Ellen okay. to kind of help him with the spelling That's and his awesome. phonics. And yeah. um, so instead of like rolling dice and doing the math, yeah. he's got to spell a word to defeat yeah. a goblin or whatever. Yeah. And it's done wonders for him. So for all of you out there that don't understand or don't you know buy into role playing or the role playing games, it's uh, Dungeons and Dragons is not a bunch of people sitting around a cauldron uh, casting real spells and and trying to raise. You're not playing right. Ray, <laughs> try, no, trying to summon Satan. Okay, Satan's here. Okay, we don't need we don't need to summon him. He's here, and he's on trial. So uh, we, it, it's it's moms and dads playing playing around. Uh, you know, with rolling some dice and writing on paper and and acting through scenarios. Yelling at the dice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's it's fun. It's storytelling. It's it's like being in a movie, going to a movie at mm -hmm. the same time, and it's it's a lot of fun. You should definitely try it. Certainly talk to. Uh, uh, Mike Dukes at mdukes at cityofkokomo.org if you want to know more. <laughs> or come talk to Sean. Sean, Sean down at uh, 121 East Sycamore at uh, Comics Cube and he'll certainly tell you a little bit more about the role playing. Um, but uh, that's about it. Uh, you got anything else you want to talk about? Uh, no. Anything? No, no. No? Did you um, talk about, with Sean any at all, Okay, uh, about the Disney making the change from for Fox. It's not 21st Century Fox Studios no. anymore. No. It is now just 21st Century. And I think that they did that because they just announced like a week or two ago that Deadpool will be released under that 20, right. uh, studio rather right. than Disney Studios. Right. Which, I mean, those, those studios have to have, because back in the day we had Touchstone, which did like the PG-13 for Disney. Yeah. Um, and I understand 20th Century, Minus the Fox is still a company. People still work there. They have a brand. I certainly understand them taking the Fox off. Mm -hmm. When they did the merger, they got they didn't they didn't buy sports or news. Yeah. Just just the content, uh, the fictional content, I guess is what you'd call it. So taking Fox off of that is certainly something they want to do, whether it's for um, uh, branding reasons or appearance reasons. Um, but I don't know why. People are still going to know that this is a Marvel movie. Yes. And they are certainly going to try to inter intertwine it in the Marvel Universe, Cinematic Universe. No, they're certainly not going to shove away Deadpool money. Right, <laughs> like... right, for sure. So, uh, I don't know. It's, I think it's, it's probably a good idea. And maybe 20 or 30 years from now, uh, you know, people will not make that Fox... Uh, Fox Association when they see a 20th century movie mm -hmm. and... Uh, May pay off then. Right now, I don't. I think it's just a it's just a move to be made for for future reasons. People still see the twenty. They're not going around to everybody's house and their DVDs and the Netflixes and <laughs> and taking a marker and taking writing out Fox out of when they watch Lethal Weapon three or whatever they yeah. watch from from the nineties. Uh, so that that name is still out there and it'll be remembered for many many years. Um, but taking that off, it's 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 probably a good move. But mm -hmm. um, I'll tell you what's a real good move is putting some uh, ready whip on these on these. <clears throat> Cheetos. That, that, yeah. Hey, that's it for this week. I'm going to recommend the Ready Whip and, and Flaming Hot Cheetos. I think everybody should try it. And send your uh, reviews to Sean at geekstrom.com. <laughs> it's not a thing. <laughs> I'm making things up now. Uh, but that's it for this week. Everybody have a good week.